Hello Flutter learners, welcome to my channel Techie Blossom. Many of you might know that I delivered two talks in 2022 on a topic Unleash Power of Animated Position Widget. My presentations were not using Google Slides, Microsoft PowerPoint or Apple Keynote. They were made using Flutter SDK. Basically, I presented my talk as a macOS application. It's not hard to do this, but it's time consuming of course. So not always, but sometimes it's very nice to have a Flutter app itself as a presentation. Because then you can show the animations like in my case as it is. You won't have to switch between IDs and run the app to show result. Since it's a time consuming process, I am sharing here some code so that you can see how easily you can achieve bare minimum slideshow for your next talk. Some of the features that we normally see in most used presentation softwares is to switch slides by the arrow keys. I was able to achieve that as well. Without further ado, let's start the coding part. So let's first set up the Flutter app for macOS platform. The steps that I show here are optional to execute. When you have a base Flutter project, you can delete all other platforms other than macOS. Now when you run the Flutter app, by default, there is some window size assigned to the application. The ideal resolution on the stage for a screen is 1920 by 1080. So it's good to set content size of your app to this. So open main Flutter window file and set content size where width is 1920 and height is 1080. This will ensure that whenever you run the app, it opens with a window size of 1920 by 1080 as default. It will also refrain you from surprises at the last moment. You can also change the name of the app that will be displayed in the app menu bar. By going into build settings from runner and searching for package name and then putting your app name there. So let's move to the first slide. Slides are the most important part of a presentation. So what bare minimum should be there in a slide? Generally, a slide has some margin from two sides, if not from all sides, so that the content starts from same point for all the slides. Also, all slides have some sort of indication of what slide is currently dis displayed, generally a slide number. So we can show a slide number at the right bottom. And most important, we will have left and right arrows so that you can click on them or use keyboard keys to navigate between slides. And to do all this, and across all slides, we would create a base slide that will hold this common functionality. So let's create a base slide as a stateless widget and in the build function, use a stack to place slide, slide one, for example, wrap this with padding widget and provide left and top padding for consistent left and top margin for all the slides. Let's keep the content of slide one as a simple title for now, and we will add more things here later if needed. To place the left arrow, right arrow and slide number, we can further wrap this with a stack. Why I am using separate stack here? Because later you will see that we use indexed stack for switching between multiple slides. For left and right arrow, use a clip R rect widget wrapped in a position widget with left and bottom as zero. The colored box becomes a child of clip R rect. Since all arrows will be in horizontal direction, so I will use row here. Now place three icon buttons and with some gap between them. For slide number, this time we can set right and bottom as zero for position widget and use clip R rect and colored box. But we still see a blank white screen. That's because I forgot to add base slide in main.dart. Once that's done, on running again, we can see a red screen with a text visible. Why is this so? That's because we have to wrap the stack with scaffold. Without a scaffold, it doesn't work. And with this, we can see the title of the presentation in center of the screen. Let's quickly change the style of title and give it a display large style. So at the bottom corners, we see the arrows and slide number. Let's quickly correct the corner of this slide number also. Just last thing. Let's give it sufficient size to these icon buttons and let's give it 40 and rerun. Now let's move to the other section. Let's create another slide that is slide two. Here you can add another text slide two 
since we will have n number of slides so we will keep a static list of slide widgets this array can be provided to the stack holding the slide one now instead of a stack we should use index stack because it takes index attribute that tells index stack about which child or which slide to show on the top let's check by changing the index to 1 so when we change index to 1 slide 2 is displayed and when we change back to 0 it will be showing slide 1 now we need to find a way to update this index that's why we will create a value notifier that will hold an integer value we will also create three functions that will change the value of current index for navigate to next slide function we can increment the value and inside navigate to previous slide we can decrement the value for the navigate to first slide function we can set the current value to index next wrap the stack with value listenable builder and pass in current index for the value listenable attribute the builder will have second parameter as the latest value which we can use in index stack for choosing the index use the same value for the slide number so in the text widget you can set current index dot value plus one or index plus one let's add click events on the arrow icons so that we can switch between slides on click of the first button which is left arrow call the navigate to previous slide function call the navigate to next slide for right arrow and call navigate to first slide for the third arrow now on running this when we click on these icons we can navigate to previous or next slide but there is a catch here once i reach on the slide 2 and press next button there will be error because we have reached index 2 but there are only two slides and index 2 will point to the third slide which is not there that's why the assert is failing where child is not equal to null so we need to stop such actions first we can only show the left arrow if current index is not zero. Second. We can have a check for current index and size of slides based on which we can show or hide the right arrow button. And lastly, we can hide the go to first slide if we are already on the first slide. Now when we run the application, the buttons are not visible when they shouldn't be. But you can see that slide number is wrong here. We did the mistake in applying the sum on the int value. So just wrap the index plus one in a curly bracket and this will first calculate the sum and then convert it to a string after. What about keyboard interactions? The part till here was pretty straightforward, but now we will add keyboard interactions, which you might not have seen before, as like me, you are also developing mobile apps only. So I want that when I press left arrow key on the keyboard, I go to the previous slide. And when I press the right arrow key, I go to the next slide. So first wrap the scaffold with raw keyboard listener and assign a focus node. For the on key attribute, check if the left arrow key is pressed. And if it is pressed, check if current index is not on the first slide. If all these are true, we can navigate to previous slide. Also, when the next key is pressed, we can check if the key pressed is right arrow and we haven't reached end of the slides. If that is so, we can navigate to the next slide. And only this is needed to add keyboard interactions. So now when you run the app, we can navigate between the slides with just the key presses without mouse. This is important when you are on stage. So now we are done with minimal work for a presentation. If you want to learn more about my presentation, about how I achieved animations or how I created templates or how I created titles, then let me know in the comment section and I will create a video for that. And lastly, if you enjoyed watching this video and learned something or other, leave a comment and like the video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.